honour and a privilege to be asked to be demonstrating um, for the New South Wales Floral Art Association on this beginning of a very exciting year. And they've not left the best till last. <laughs> but Saturday night, Saturday night comes with let's have some entertaining. Um, and so my idea for my demonstration was we're entertaining, we're getting the food ready, but it's not an event without flowers on the table. No. And then sometimes we leave the flowers on the table to the last minute. And so it's what can we rustle up that's going to look amazing to do with our buffet, to do with our barbecue, to do with everything else. So I've got some really quick ideas for you to take away, to use in your floral art, to use in your competition pieces, but also in your general family life or general life in general, that you can actually put a little bit of spice of floral art in amongst all of the, the beautiful food that we serve up with to our friends and our family. So the first uh, idea um, comes, so I've also looked back historically on what I started to demonstrate. So what did I start demonstrating that I felt comfortable with showing people on my skills? And I always go back to orchids. Orchids quite are resilient, they are long lasting, and you can do a whole manner of beautiful things with them. So what we've done today is I'm garlanding. So garlanding, and uh, I did the ones in the pot. These are ones my beautiful assistant, Mark Pampling did. Um, so I was very honored to have Mark Pampling as my assistant. Um, so basically it's taking the natural flower off its natural stem and then thread, or twisting the wires around uh, the actual flower in order to give it space gives it beautiful movement. Most of my designs are gonna be repetition of form. So there's lots of repetition that I've featured strongly in all of my materials. So taking different colored orchids, garland, garland, garlanding them together, and then positioning them in a container so they can still see the beauty of them, but so they actually, these will actually last. Um, the first time I did this design, I was doing flowers in the domain and garlanding, and it, I was outside demonstrating, and I was demonstrating for three days, and I'd used the same garland for three days in 25 to 30 degree heat with a little bit of water. I used the same flowers, so I know that the longevity, they will still look fabulous. Some of the techniques and some of the materials I use are used in a commercial way, but more now, nowadays, in a floral art capacity. So the bullion wire we have available to us as florists and floral designers is a bullion wire which has got a, a wrinkle to it. It's a natural crinkle to the actual wire itself. Um, so just to go through how I created this technique, taking just a little strand of the bullion wire, I work to the back of the orchid. This is when Mark goes, oh, I didn't do that. <laughs> I then hold the bullion wire parallel to the stem of the orchid. I take it around three times. Now the beauty of bullion wire is, is it's flexible, it's, um, it's metallic, so it's reflective, so you can actually see it nicely. But by wrapping it three times, you can't necessarily do that with a florist wire, because florist wire are too uh, thick, mm -hmm. and so you've got to be mindful that you don't snap the stem of the orchid. So, working parallel, I've taken the bullion wire around three times. I then take it back over the back of the orchid, so it's not going to fall off, regardless of, I, I did trial these out on small children when I first started doing it. It's like, could you just go and swing that around in the garden and see how long it takes? And it didn't. They swung it around and swung it around. While working on the back of the orchid, um, I leave, it's up to you as a designer. You can do it very, very close together, or you can position the orchids a little bit further apart. But by holding the bullion wire parallel to the stem, taking it around three times, 
I then twist it back over the back of the orchid. It means that it won't slide off. And that can actually create lots of movement and it's not going to slide off. So parallel, twist it around, but then the trick is to then take it back over the back of the orchid and to secure it around the wire again, okay? So once you've done lots and lots of these, um, I have actually put this on a, on a coat hanger or you could put it on a rod. And if you've got uh, an area like a kitchen that you, um, it's part of your open plan, but you want it to stay closed off because you don't want the disasters in the kitchen coming out to the main party, um, putting the orchids on a dowling rod or a rod, it creates a beautiful natural curtain. So there's many, many uses to garlanding. Um, you could do this with gum nuts, you could do um, all sorts, all sorts. But you garlanding... Them? Pardon? Did you squirt them with a very fine spray? Are yes. Going to do that? So in the water, there's water in the base of this. Yeah, Does... but when you do them, if you did them... Oh, yes, yes, yes. So yes, because orchids take up water through the, the, the petals at the face yeah. of the flower. So by spraying it, you'll help the longevity yeah. of the, the flower. Um, another product that I found um, in and around, um, so this is from Kosh. We love light as the evenings draw to a close and it gets to dusk and gets dark. Um, we, do, we also want candlelight, we also want that mood lighting. This product only works when it touches water. Oh. So it doesn't work now. So this is really bizarre. Oh, oh I'm probably got sweaty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're adding another little ambience. So I know we're not having a, a tropical or Hawaiian party tonight, but you could be. You could be. I'm wearing a, a bird tonight, just to give you a little tantalising. Yeah, oh, that one's okay. Play with me. Come on. That one might not want to work. We'll try this one. So we don't need lots, but I thought I'd put those in before I put my last deeper colour. So the colours, the colours of this design, um, I love the purple, I love the, the lavender purple. The bowl, the glass, the goldfish bowl is a little bit larger than anticipated. I did leave my smaller one in the classroom um, and then I was driving away thinking, oh yeah, that's what I was supposed to pick up. Um, you can get a little fish bowl, you can get medium mm. large. This is in a bit of extravagance, but I didn't know how big my audience was going to be. <laughs> so, um, I've got to take this back to the flower shop because I, I did steal it from the flower shop. But garlanding mm. and what you can do with garlanding for entertaining. Mm. So that's my first one.